Hi there, welcome back to RC Model Reviews. I recently reviewed this, the Mobius camera, and a number of people quite rightly pointed out to me, hey, you didn't check the RF noise on this thing, and, well, what does the video output look like when you're going to use it for FPV? So, that's what I'm going to do today. We'll check out both those things. Radio, here we go. We've got the Mobius here, it's turned off. I've got it just under the little stub antenna of the spectrum analyzer, so if there's any noise there, we will pick it up. Currently the noise floor is at minus 112 decibels, which is it's pretty quiet. There's not much noise on the band there. I've got the frequency set to 450 megahertz in the middle with a span of 50. So it goes from um, 425 to 475 megahertz. Covers that UHF band that people like to use for long range FPV. So I'm going to turn on the Mobius now. And remember our baseline is a minus 112 decibels. Woo, look at that. There we go, that's jumped up. And it's now bumped itself up to minus 86 so that's the difference 112 minus 86 i'm going to get my calculator because i'm old and i forget so it's 112 minus 86 equals okay 26 decibels of noise which is quite a bit actually it's quite surprisingly high let's turn that off okay and it should disappear so let's put the little keychain camera there as a reference because oops Damn, kick the camera, never mind. I'll put the keychain camera there if I can find it. What have I done with that? Oh, I don't know, the bench is getting a bit messy. It's going to be time for a tidy up soon. Here it is, it's right in front of me. So here's the keychain camera. Let's turn that on and see what that does. Here we go. There we go. So that's a slightly different noise pattern, but it's around about minus, about minus 90. It's going up and down a lot. It's minus... So it's minus 90, as minus 95 is an average. That's obviously significantly less noise than the Mobius. So yeah, the cost of having that 1080p is more noise. And of course this turns itself off pretty quickly. Um, so let's see what happens actually when it starts recording because that can also make a difference to the noise profile. So I'll turn the Mobius on again. There we go. So that's now functioning. And I'll press the record button, which is the top one. And we'll see what happens to the noise figure. Yep, that's probably taken it, it's now minus 86. No, it hasn't changed it too much. But let's have a look at the, uh, what other part of the band we're gonna get noise on here. You can see there's that huge hump in the UHF band here, which is where we're centered. And we may also find that there's noise on the GPS band. So let's change the center frequency. Let's go up to, yeah, there's still, there's noise there. Let's just see if that disappears when we turn off the Mobius. Yep, so it is producing a bit of noise in the 850 megahertz part of the band. Let's go up to GPS, which I think is about 1.6 by memory. Don't recall for sure. Let's go about there. See if there's anything that comes up there. No, that seems pretty quiet up there. Let's go right up to 2.4 and see if there's any noise on the RC band. Go to 2.4. Here we go, that's the 2.4 band. There's nothing much happening there. It's not putting out much noise on the 2.4 band, just turned it off, no change. So yeah, it looks like it. it's noisy on UHF. It's gonna make a lot of noise on UHF. Not so much, I don't think, as the um, Boss Cam and the Horizon HD, but it's definitely making noise, more noise than the 720p number 16 keychain camera. So that's something to be a little aware of. It's going to impact the range of your UHF system. But I'll just give you a demonstration here of how things work and why it's important to get a good spacing. Let's just turn the frequency down again to, sorry about all the beeping, I should turn that off. Turn it down to 460. Let's change the span to, what have we got on span? Change the span to 50 megahertz, there we go. And this is where we get a lot of noise, turn it on. Zoom, there's all that noise again. Now I'm gonna move the camera slowly away. At the moment it's probably an old money, about two and a half inches from the spectrum analyzer antenna. I'm going to move it away. You watch what happens to the noise as I move it away. See how quickly that noise disappears? That's, as I mentioned before in one of my videos, this is the inverse square law. If you double the distance, you get quarter the strength of signal. So this is why it's important on a FPV model to make sure there's maximum difference, the distance between any source of noise, like your camera or your video transmitter or whatever, and any sensitive receivers. So there we go, I've moved that now. What have I got that to? That's probably in the old money, it's about six inches, seven inches, and the, the noise levels dropped off dramatically. I'll turn it off and you'll hardly notice the difference. 
There we go. See, that's off. No, it's not. It's still on. Actually, I pushed the wrong button. I was, oh, I was recording. Now we got, there we go. Now, let's start again. That's off. And let's turn it on. Remember, it's just out here. Just to add a shot, I think. Turn it on. And now it's on. Very, virtually no noise. It all depends on how far away it is from the item that's going to be interfered with. So keep that distance to a maximum. That Simply moving that six or seven inches has made a huge difference to the amount of noise that's being received. So if you can keep this six or seven inches away from your uh, long range UHF receiver, you're probably going to be all right. But as you see, when you bring it close, then things get really bad and it gets really noisy. So that's something to watch out for. Okay, there we go. I've hooked the FPV camera up to my um, up to my LCD display in here, and you can see that there is actually quite a bit of latency. I'm try actually what I'll try and do is get the camera pointed so you can see there is actually a noticeable amount of lag. Someone mentioned that, and yes, there is. There is a lot of lag. It's quite perceptible, which is not a good thing for FPV flying. Now, let's try and get this lined up so that I can see the same thing through both cameras, my hand perhaps. And you'll be able to see on the LCD display what the... Where are we? Where's my hand? Um, so, oh, there we go. I'm looking at the wrong screen. No wonder it's all difficult. Look, so hopefully you can see the latency there. It's quite significant, isn't it? That's, um, that's really awful, actually, to be honest. So, yeah, that's probably going to limit this camera's use for FPV if you're flying proximity stuff. It's very easy to get into something called pilot-induced oscillation if you have that much lag. Basically, you're putting your control inputs in too late. So if you start going left, right, left, right, you can actually end up over-controlling and going into a spiral. So, yeah, um, I'm not at all impressed with the latency. So as an FPV camera, I'm afraid, I think you'd better stick into the board cameras. Now, this output is 16.9, obviously. It doesn't actually fill the full screen here. Notice that. Um, it seems to be, I don't know what's going on there, um, a little bit odd. So if you're looking at it through the sky zone glasses or any FPV goggles, you're going to have this band of black top and bottom. You're wasting, wasting some of your screen real estate, which is not good. Um, I would change this to the 4.3 output, but uh, I don't have a computer here to do that with because you've got to edit a little file or use a piece of software to change it. There's no on-screen menu for altering those things with the Mobius camera. But hey, all that aside, as an HD recording camera, this is a really brilliant, brilliant little device. And as you saw, its ability to, um, or the noise output, is limited really by distance. If you can get it further away from your sensitive electronics, your long-range FPV radio gear receiver, then you're probably going to have no problems. But um, yeah, in the meantime, um, it does have limitations for FPV. So I'd say stick with the 600 or 700, 800 TV line Sony board cameras and you'll get a much better experience. So there we go, that's part two of what was only going to be a one part review, there may be a part three, we'll wait and see. Um, I'm probably not going to use this for FPV, having seen that latency, and given the type of FPV flying I do, which tends to be proximity, you know, sort of close, fast, low to the ground, I couldn't fly with that amount of latency, it would just be the end of the model, any model I tried to use this on. So yeah, it's, uh, it's good for what it is, which is a great high definition 1080p recording camera, all, all self-contained, everything in one, nice little package. It's not an FPV camera in my book. I wouldn't use it for FPV. I'm sure some people do, and you get used to the lag and why you go the latency. But um, no, I'll stick with, my board camera, stick with my board cameras, and I'll keep this on the wing of my planes, wherever, to get that really good, really crisp, high-def video footage. And as I say, the noise, the noise is not too bad. It's more than a keychain camera, but you get six or seven inches between this and your long-range long RC gear, and you're probably going to have very few problems. Okay, thank you for watching. I shall go back and do some more work. Bye for now.